Hey everybody, this is Brendan here with Common Motor. It's common-motor.com on the internet, and today we're going to show you how to test and troubleshoot your stator coil for the Honda 175, 350, 360, and 450 family of motorcycles. Stay tuned. We get a lot of questions here at Common Motor regarding the charging system on the twin cylinder families of bikes. Now, this system is a single phase permanent magnet type uh, charging system. They're fairly robust. We don't see a lot of failure with them, but you have to have some other parts in place first to make sure they're good before you start diving into the testing of the actual stator coil. Uh, the first thing is uh, a good healthy battery. Uh, we recommend an AGM battery or a lead acid battery. We'll have a link up here in the corner to a video that talks a little bit more about batteries and battery options and why that's important. So healthy battery that's full charge is, is key. And the other one is a uh, updated voltage regulator and rectifier. This is one of our combo units. Again, we go into more detail in another video about it. Link up in the corner there. Uh, definitely the number one electrical upgrade on all of these bikes. So assuming that you have a good battery and a good rectifier and you're still having charging problems, then we can dive into the stator itself to see if there's problems there. So let's get into it and show you how we're gonna go about diagnosing and troubleshooting it. The physical charging aspect of the, the system is basically two different components. One is the, the stator coil itself, which is this guy or this guy, this is one off the 350 here. And the rotor, which is this guy right here, which has a magnet on it, hence it being a permanent magnet. And uh, we're gonna show you, we're gonna dive into these first and diagnose these and help also identify the wires, what part of the circuit they are, and we'll get to this guy a little bit later. Okay, here's the stator coil out of the bike here, and we have three wires coming off it. Now, typically, we have a white wire, a yellow wire, and a pink wire, as you can see in our diagram here on screen. And this kind of shows how the stator system is structured uh, electrically. However, someone has gone in and repaired this at one point, and flip it over there, and they have changed all three wires to the same kind of reddish color wire. So I don't really know which one is which as far as uh, what's hooked to what in the charging system, but I can figure it out with a multimeter. So not only am I gonna be able to figure out this, but I also will check for continuity through the system to make sure there isn't any broken connection throughout the entire circuit. So we're testing two things with uh, one test. Uh, I got a digital multimeter here. I have it set to ohms. I have it on the very low ohm setting. And we're gonna take some resistance values. Perform the tests. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna test my meter, make sure my meter is working and see what my residual uh, resistance is in the meter. So it's about you know, 0.2 ohm, just to know that there's a value there. The meter has its own resistance value. And I'm gonna to try to find the two wires that have the highest resistance reading out of you know, combining the three. So let's start with uh, this one here. I don't know what that one is, and maybe this one here. Let's see what we get. We're getting maybe like 1.1, 1 1.0 ohms, that's fine. I'm gonna keep this one touched. I'm gonna go to this one now. 0.5 ohms, so that's definitely less. And then let's test this combo. 1.8 ohms. So we're at 1.3 here. We're at 0.5 here, and we're at 1.1. 1 .1. All right, since these two right here give the highest reading at 1.4, 1 1.3 ohms, that tells me that these two are the white yellow wires, and this one is the pink, which is the common. So pink, white, yellow. Now you're like, well, which one's the white, which one's the yellow? Uh, it doesn't really matter, but we can actually figure it out because these should be combined. You can reference our white yellow wire mod video where we go into the headlight bucket and do that. But just for sake of identification, uh, let's do that. So the one that has the higher resistance of the two combos, so we know this is our pink. And this one was 0.5 ohms. And this one was again, 1.1 .1 ohm. So this is gonna be the yellow. 
This is the primary charging wire. And this one's gonna be the white secondary charging wire because this one has, again, more resistance. And this one has, this combo has the least resistance in reference to uh, the pink, which is our common. So, pink, yellow, white, all based on resistance readings. And we got readings through the whole coil, so it says the coil has full continuity through it, so it should be good to go. Although we have you know, tested for good continuity in the coil and we've identified the wires, it's a, a positive sign that this is probably a good stator coil, but it's not guaranteed. You now, this is a static test on the bench. We need to do a dynamic test on the bike when it's running to make sure it actually is working correctly under operation. Because although we're getting good values here on the meter, uh, sometimes you know, the, the resin around these wires uh, gets old or the wires start chafing and you start getting some intermittency under heat or heat cycling and all of a sudden you get good readings when it's cold but when it warms up things start to act up on the bike. So uh, we're in a positive direction but actual testing on the bike needs to be done to confirm yeah it's working like it's supposed to. Uh, we brought out our shop CB175, which you know has the same type of charging system as the 350s, 360s, and 450s, and we're going to do uh, two different tests on the bike. Now, this is a running bike. We're going to do an AC stator test, see the voltages coming out of the stator, and then we're going to do a DC test actually at the battery and show you what the voltage changes are. I have my uh, digital multimeter here, and for the first test, we're going to go to our AC mode. At this point, mine goes to 200 in that range. And, what I've also done down here is this is my uh, plug. Move that out of the way there. Uh, that's my plug coming out of the stator coil going into the harness there. Um, I moved it out here so you guys can see it. And we're going to tap into it when the bike's running and show you what the values are. Okay, so I pulled our stator plug out. We have our, our pink wire here, which is our common, our white wire, and then our yellow wire here. Uh, for this test, I'm going to go ahead and take my lead. I'm going to tap into the pink. And we're going to be measuring between white and pink and yellow and pink on our, our meter here, get this one tapped in. Let's go ahead and do that first value, our first spot. My meter is set to AC. I'm gonna turn it on and we're gonna fire up the bike and we're gonna be looking for somewhere in the neighborhood of the high teens to low 20s uh, AC signal coming out of the stator here on the meters at 5,000 RPM. So we'll come up here, put the meter there, turn the bike on that. Okay, so we're at idle speed right now. We're at 10 at idle. Let's bring it up to like five grand. High 18, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna go down to the bottom. I'm gonna switch to the yellow side and see what we got there. Yellow, back in the pink again. All right. Around 18. All right, that's, that's acceptable. Uh, now we're gonna check the DC voltage. This is gonna be power actually going to the battery from the charging system through the regulator and the rectifier. Uh, this bike does have our upgraded rectifier on it. And so we're gonna check what happens at idle speed and what happens at 5,000 RPM. Uh, on the meter here, turn it on. We're gonna go to DC volts right here, which is the line of the little dashes. We're at a 20 volt range. Let me tap the meter in and uh, let's see what we, what we got here. I'm gonna tap my red one into right here. Cause that should give us a Let's just see what our static voltage is right now at the battery, not even bike running. So we're doing a static check on the battery right now, not on. So we're at 12.68 volts. So that tells me my battery is good. If we don't have a good battery, this, this check is kind of worthless. All right, let's turn the bike on. Keys on, power. And we're running. At idle speed, we're at uh, 12 and a quarter. We're running, that's all right. And bring the RPM back up to 5,000, so we can get it to here.
The other part of the, the charging system is the rotor itself, and more specifically, the magnets that are here along the side of the rotor. Uh, there are six of them. I've gone ahead and labeled them one through six, uh, just so you can see where they are. The typical of these kind of squares here, at least on this 350, 360 style rotor, uh, some of the other like 450s are a little bit different, but you'll be able to identify which parts of the magnet uh, as you're diagnosing it. And as I said, they are you know, they're magnets. Now, I don't really have a, a rocket science uh, quantitative test for this, but sometimes on these, one of the magnets or two of the magnets gets weak with time, and that causes charging system problems. And so probably the easiest way to test this is to have something kind of heavy, like a hammer, and I'm just gonna touch the end of the hammer to each magnet. I'm just gonna feel for the resistance. I mean, uh, you know, I'm getting a feel for it, touching each one. And I'm saying, all right, is there, you know, a good level of resistance here? You can be able to tell if you have, if you have a weak one, you can tell. These are all feel pretty good, about the same. I have them kind of pull. So in, in this case, this one's fine. But if you had a weak one, you'd know it. And having something kind of heavy, like a hammer, where you can pull on it to identify if you have a weak one uh, is an easy way to, to tell. If it's bad, you have to replace the rotor because there's not really a way to remagnetize them. But in this case, they all feel pretty good. They have about the same resistance and just kind of pulling on them. Yeah, they're, they're, I understand they're kind of primitive tests, but it just gives you an idea, do I have a weak magnet on here or not? All right, so that does it for cedar coil diagnostic testing, rotor testing, et cetera. I hope this video has been helpful, help you figure out if your charging system, or at least these components of the charging system are working correctly on your bike, and uh, keep your bike in battery charge and down the road. As always, this is Brendan with Common Motor, common-motor.com on the internet. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our newsletter via our website and subscribe to this YouTube channel down below. And don't forget to ring the bell. We'll see you next time.